Let us pray. In the name of the one who overturns our definitions of power and our definitions of kingship and who came to save us all. So we pray. Amen. From a seemingly far-fetched request to go and fetch a donkey when surely a, a, a shining white stallion would have made a much stronger impression, to voices in the crowd, some confused, some delighted, some excited, here he is, here's our champion, come Messiah, come and save us, to an imagined pilot pondering the past, still pondering that man, the one who seemed to see right into his very soul. And Pilate still annoyed that his own legacy is overshadowed by the washing of his hands so long ago. To these, Jesus comes, walking, striding, riding into people's lives and is met with a variety of responses. Some will leave everything they have, drop their nets and follow him and and still be puzzled by him three years later as they walk that long last walk to Jerusalem with him. Some caught up in the crowd are there unwittingly when all they planned to do was nip down to the shop to pick up some olives and grapes and bread and some hummus. Others there in the crowd are there because they'd heard on the grapevine that the teacher would be in town and curiosity has won out they want to see what all the fuss is about. Others still wanting this, wanting that, hoping and yearning for change, change to their own personal circumstances or the circumstances of those they love or to wider circumstances. If you're willing, heal me or my mum's ill, help her. Beyond that, Free us, deliver us from our enemies, restore our nation, raise us from the dust and ashes of oppression. Every person in that crowd, hanging the weight of their hopes and their expectations, curiosity and endless speculations upon the one riding into the city on a humble donkey riding into the city that David established, the place of power, the seat of kings, and the temple's home. And as he rides, cloaks are laid out before him on the road, an extravagance of homage, a gesture fit for a king. But this is a king who will not trample the people underfoot. This is a king whose kingdom is one of community. He brings in a kingdom, the family of God's children, with this king as a brother and a sister to all. A kingdom that's a kingdom, built upon compassion and care for one another, all as part of loving service to the God who is all compassion, who cares so much that even individual hairs on heads are known and counted. Jesus comes. Jesus comes even now, still walking, striding, riding into our lives, our world in all its mess and all its glory. His message of justice, of peace, of love is still as relevant now as it was on that first Palm Sunday. And he invites us along for the ride, to ride of our lives, as together with him in community, we build the kingdom of heaven on earth, showing the promise of the kingdom, the kingdom to come. As we journey with him through the week, through this holy week to the cross and beyond, we may at times be like the disciples. We might be puzzled. We may at times be like some in the crowd, be part of the journey almost by accident, just by going about our everyday lives. We are surely brimful of curiosity at times upon the way. 
and each one of us comes with our own particular hopes and expectations that, like the crowd, we will put upon him even as he rides to come and save us all, to restore us to new life, to bring us to wholeness in and through him. As we journey with him, with all our many responses to him, this week especially, may we understand more deeply that true power is paradoxically found in utter vulnerability, that in the giving of self, of all those things that we put before God and others, and of all that we do in love to God or for God and for others, we find life in all its fullness. And may we understand too that light will always overcome the dark, that goodness is stronger than evil, and that love is stronger than hate in the kingdom, the kingdom that is God's. Amen. Let's take a moment now for some prayerful reflection.